to me here, Kato Kato. You helped to relax me because I was a bundle of nerves. Thank you very much. Uh, I was asked to say a few words about Mangatawa Papamoa Blocks Incorporated before I hand over to Victoria at a later stage. Uh, Mangatawa Papamoa Blocks uh, is made up of 700 acres of land and about 750 shareholders. Not all that big when you think of it. Um, some of the, the big Maori blocks down down, uh, down the line, East Coast and Wairapa, they have uh, paddocks as big as our corpus. <laughs> However, we have the city on our boundary, so it makes things different for us. The land values go up and that, and uh, we have to change change our way of uh, generating revenue because of the increase in the value of the lands. But anyway, Mangatawa Papamoa Blocks, for all of you who don't know where it is, some of you went up there yesterday, we're right on the edge of it, just out, go down the driveway, you turn into Truman Lane, and drive down the end of Truman Lane, if you go fast enough and don't stop, you'll run into our Papakainga. Up behind the Papakainga is our marae, and to the right, up on the hill, is our new office that we've just been opened three weeks ago. Uh, the design of that building, which is quite an eye-opener, eye uh, is based on the legend of the three whales. So uh, we're pretty proud of that building. And uh, before we go any further, I would like to introduce you to the committee, uh, our members of uh, committee of management, with our five members. Uh, my deputy chair is Neil Takani, sitting down here. Our hard-working CEO, Paula Widow here. Wakata Kingi, and of course, Victoria Kingi, who's at the forefront of Papakanga development. And then we have our Incorporation Secretary, Jay, who's going to be working this machine up there. Anyway, <laughs> I want to go back 10 years to when, uh, before I go any further, our main income stream, as you can see up there, is uh, kiwi fruit, And it still is. Uh, now I'll go back 10 years to when the rest of the land, the rest of the corpus was leased out uh, to people who don't, didn't really care about fixing fences up, uh, cutting weeds and that, you know, and fixing the broken water mains and all that. And uh, we decided we're going to take our land back. And we'll, we did that. <laughs> and then we put a pole in the ground. And we said, we're going to invest in our land and grow our assets from here on in. And so we hired a farm manager who took over the farm. We got some cows and all of a sudden we were farmers in our own right. We made a joint, we made a joint venture with uh, a group of people from the South Island called uh, uh, Retirement Assets Limited. Their expertise was building retirement villages. So we made a 50-50 joint uh, partnership to build what we call a Pacific Coast Retirement Village. Uh, that's been a wonderful journey, I might add. That started in uh, 2007. Unfortunately, it started during, uh, at the same time as the GFC. You know what a GFC is? A global financial crisis. So it took a while for us to get that uh, first stage of the retirement village up and running. However, two years ago, about two years ago, the momentum built up, built up on that first stage of the retirement village. So much so that we had to look at extending the land and adding on to the retirement village. Uh, the, I won't go into the Mary Land Court process because that's another story again. Anyway, we had to go to the Mary Land Court twice to take the land out of the corpus and uh, form a joint venture and a long-term long lease to build the Pacific Coast. Okay, so we went to the Mary Land Court and applied for some, another seven hectares to extend the village. As you can see up there, there's the first stage. That took a while to develop, and as I was saying a couple of years ago, go back, go oh, that, that's right, leave it like that. As you can see over there, that's stage two. The first stage was on the previous page. That is now complete, and we have, we're starting on stage two, which is up there, and let me tell you, it's half sold already. Uh, the retirement village itself is, at the moment is like a runaway train. It's selling like hotcakes. We've got people coming down from Auckland, and we predict that in a couple of years that'll be all full up. We might even have to look at extending it again. But 
The returns from the retirement village are through heck there, I can assure you, is very rewarding. Uh, even more so than growing kiwi food and that. So we look forward to the completion of that village. The second stage is also com uh, contain a aged care facility and a hospital. So that is about to begin next year. Here's some pictures of our, that was our vision of the uh, Pacific Coast there. Unfortunately, the two story, uh, the three story villas didn't happen because of the demand. The demand wasn't there for villas. So we, we've gone over to, uh, uh, for our apartments. So we've changed over to most of the houses there are villas now. And there, as you can see, there's a photo of the uh, community center. As you drive into the re retirement center, there's a picture of all the villas over there. Um, there you go. Carry on. Oh, we'll do the, about the uh, retirement village. Uh, our next uh, developments were industrial land. And along Truman Lane here, you'll see a big building uh, with tuis on it. All right, so tuis, where you go into the nurseries and buy your uh, compost and that. Tuis are the firm that have shifted onto our land here. That land, before tuis went on there and, and the trucking business beside it, was growing gorse. It was actually costing us money. So, so that was a great move. We've got twoies on there, and, and the rest of the development all along Truman Lane is here marked for industrial development, and it's going to happen very soon. <coughs> um, what I want to say is, in conclusion, of all the ventures that I've been involved with in Mangatawa, the most rewarding to me is providing housing for our kaumatu and for our families. Uh, to see the look on those people's faces when they moved into their uh, papakainga just a few weeks ago is priceless. You know, our duty as a, as a, as a uh, corporation is to look after our people. And that's what we're doing. That we, you know, we don't pay out huge dividends because that doesn't help everybody. The smaller shareholders miss out. So we put all, all our resources into looking after our people and... Uh, our second foe is to invest in our people. And we do that by providing housing, health grants, sports grants, education grants. So there we are. That's Papa Mwangatawa Blocks for you. Um, I'd like now to hand over to uh, Victoria King, the mover and shaker of the Papa Kanga world. Hello, Victoria. Thank you very much. When we had our uh, our pre uh, our briefing for our presentation a couple of days ago, Kevin was supposed to bring the bourbon. We didn't have our shots. Sir? You oh, were supposed yeah. to bring the bourbon. Oh, I forgot it. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, Morina Koto. Um, uh, those some of you came on the site visit yesterday on the buses. I just want to say thank you for staying. Um, longer than we had anticipated the day to run yesterday, but that was Kate Pai. Um, uh, it was a very nice turnout. I was really pleased that you did stay and you did come along for the journey, so you did get to see uh, some of the housing up at Mangatawa and hear the story there. And then we went further along around to Welcome Bay and looked at Pirihima. Um, so that was nice. It was a nice way to end the day. Um, I, I guess I just want to see way off what Kevin's been talking about in terms of the retirement village, um, Mangatawa's main income is derived from kiwi fruits. When PSA hit, it was really clear that we needed to make sure we had a diversified portfolio. And so because we're squashed right in between all of the urban growth through Papamoa, it's an obvious fit for us to look at property and land development. It's important to know that the retirement village it is a very lucrative commercial business for us, and it's all held on a long-term leasehold, so none of the land actually gets sold through that process, um, because one of the cornerstones of Mangatawa is to not sell our land and alienate our, our whenua. Okay, let's have a quick talk about housing. I'm going to 
flick through quite quickly because some of you have been to other conferences, have seen some of this information. I know I've got some familiar faces in the crowd, and I also want to get us quickly along to Jay Walters, who's going to talk about the tenancy management. We've been talking about building houses. The next phase is then how do we look after our people in those houses, and I, it's going to be really good to hear feedback from others in the room too who, who are in that space, and I know um, that we've got Jenny um, from the Aboriginal Housing Trust talking about some of those matters, I think on a Saturday, I think it is. But that's sort of where it's heading, isn't it, Farno? You know, we're building houses, we're creating communities, we need to look after them. Okay. All right, in a nutshell, the Mangatawa Papakainga, we built four one-bedroom Komatua flats in 1987. Then there was a long hiatus, um, which really reflects how difficult it was over that period to find funding to build houses. And I think those ones in 1987 were, um, uh, came under the Māori Housing Scheme, uh, Māori Affairs Housing Scheme. Um, and then in 2010, we built 10 two-bedroom Komatua flats. That was... Uh, utilising, uh, oh, actually that was a partnership with Housing New Zealand. So the interesting thing with each of these phases is there have been different financial and funding arrangements for each of them. And you've really got to keep on your toes because it keeps bloody changing. You know, just as soon as you're getting used to one sort of funding and finance regime, it changes. The agency changes, the people change, you've got to start all over again. Anyway, they were good at that. Um, and then in 2013, uh, we built two more two-bedroom homes. That came out of a, um, just an opportunity through the social housing unit at that time. Uh, there was funding available, left over, and we were just in the right place at the right time, prepared, I guess. 2014, 12 four-bedroom um, whānau homes, and those whānau moved into their homes in January this year. Jay's going to talk more about that. That was awesome. Um, and then eight kainga whenua homes are planned for the balance in the papakainga, and I think all up there are about 36 houses together. So we've got a nice mix of koma to a whānau, um, rental and home ownership happening there. I'm going to flick quite quickly through these next slides. Oh, did not quick, flick quickly through that. There's our beautiful koma to a, um, and the blessing that got things um, underway. Um, <laughs> in terms of the first lot of new houses that were built. Oh, I like that photo. Um, and then, of course, we set up a project control group, and you want, to, and you want to have the best people around you that you can afford and like. There's no point working with people you don't like. But, um, you know, there, there's something in that. We often try to do it ourselves. <laughs> we often try to do it on the smell of an oily rag because we have to. And then we, sometimes we just become obsessed that it has to be a Māori, it has to be a Māori architect, it has to be a Māori builder, it has to be a... No, it doesn't. We want the best people to give us the best advice and support because we deserve it. And we also need more putia <laughs> to be able to access that. So I just want to acknowledge Frank. Where are you, Frank? From Babbage, who we go to often, pretty much 99% of the time now, as a, an architect who understands what we need and... Um, just bends over backwards to deliver uh, really top quality work for us. So kia ora, Frank. So um, Komatua Flats started off with the concept. Um, Frank assisted with the internal layout and design. We consulted with our Komatua, of course, because their needs are important. I have been to a conference in Fremantle where I listened to a contractor talking about providing housing for an Aboriginal community and never once mentioned the community, and then found out that they never even engaged with that community to figure out what they needed. Um, and I just found that um, just amazing that that could happen. Really important we engage with our people and that the houses we build reflect their needs. Right, and awesome. If we can get our whānau working on the projects, that's awesome. Look at these black whanas, hey? So they did the earthworks, our whānau. We looked for opportunities to, um, to engage them. It's difficult too. You've got to remember if you've got a big project and you're tendering, there, is, there are market expectations around how you manage um, your engagement in that because it has to be at arm's length. You want to be credible. You want to be professional. So you have to come up with, with ways to uh, um, enable your people to work on those projects without 
compromising the integrity of that process. So if you want to know how to do that, come see me. <laughs> um, and then we, of course, we looked for rangatahi from, um, who were in the trades to work on, on our projects as well. Um, this has progressed now to the point where Mangatawa and Ngā Pōtiki, who are um, almost synonymous, but um, in terms of having the same membership, uh, are working closely together to deliver some of these social outcomes in terms of rangatahi through the trades. So Ngā Pōtiki is part of a consortium with the BOP Polytech mm -hmm. and are encouraging our, the students there out into these projects. And we had our first two apprentice, apprentices appointed um, a couple of months ago, so that program's only been going a year. Okay, infrastructure in. This is just the process, frames going up, cladding going on, and then completed. So that guy in that picture is putting in a pathway the morning of the opening, um, and he's doing that because we, woke, we, we completed the houses. The morning of the opening, we all went down, and you can't see it, but to the left of that picture is a hauora, uh, that afternoon, the evening before, they had pulled the fence down between the, the papakainga and the hauora. And it just it just had this magical feel about it. You know, it's bringing the fences down. So they, that's what they did. So we thought, well, we better put a path in and whack that up that morning. So these are our beautiful homes for our kaumatua. This is Auntie Eber's place. She's our poster girl. Are you in here, Auntie Eber? No? Um, if... Um, anyone asks to go up and have a look at the Papa Kainga, which Auntie Eva is always accommodating, so she's, she's the boss. I uh, just want to say, you know, our housing doesn't have to be cheap and nasty. We can win awards. Uh, thanks, Frank. So Babbage won an architectural award for the houses. That's great. Um, and there we are up on the hill. So this is sort of the structure of how that, that, that housing worked in terms of funding and finance. So a grant from Housing New Zealand and then a loan from Housing New Zealand secured against the houses. A 15-year lease back, which means Mangatawa does get a market rent but can rent them to uh, our kaumatua at a subsidised, at, at a less than market rent. <clears throat> That's, that has now transitioned over to MSD um, and that transition um, has was awesome. I have to say that the collaboration with Mangatawa MSD here locally was really good. Um, and so that just sets out the process. And these, these will be up online for you to have a look at in detail. And then there was the opportunity for two more units. And the only point I want to make there is that, you know, luck favours the prepared. So if you can be as prepared as you can be, even if you don't have the hope of money sitting at the end of that tunnel, if you can be pre as prepared as you can be, <laughs> then sometimes an opportunity comes out and, and you take that up. These are just some sketches, just to give you an idea of the, oh, what are these? Four bedroom homes. So uh, again, Frank from Babbage assisted us with designing the four bedroom homes. We came up with two designs and um, to fit the site, but also to gain as much northerly aspect as possible. And because they were on either side of the road, we needed two designs. They are really lovely inside. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, internal garage. We made a decision to also insulate the garages, which was which was an interesting um, thing to consider. But what we thought, what where we got to as a board, was that in the winter when our kids need extra space, that's where they'll end up playing, and so we might as well insulate them and put some you know hardware carpet on on them as well, and our whānau do utilise them all the time, and, ev and of course in the summer. So the doors go up and everyone's sitting in the garages and you can look across the street and you're, you're, you're engaging. Um, so um, I think that was a good call on our part. One of the things we had to consider was, well, okay, then it becomes another bedroom and we don't want to see our people sleeping in the garage. So those are the things you bal balance up when you're making these sort of decisions. So these are just photos of some of the houses up there. Um, and so where we're at now, we've got 38 kids in that papakainga now. We need a playground. And we need some funding. So if any of the sponsors want to koha to our playground, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, we, we do need a playground. And Mangatawa has kept the rugby field up the top because we know those kids are going to grow up and they're going to need to play somewhere else as well. So I've got a meeting with TECT on Monday. 
um, because we've put an application into them for funding, and I hope that goes well. But if anyone's feeling generous today and wants to talk to me about a bit of a koha to that, that'd be great. So that's, that's us, that's the papakainga. I want to introduce Jay Walters, um, who is our uh, incorporation secretary, and who is the glue that now keeps this papakainga in shape um, from an administrative um, and tenancy management point of view. Kia ora. Morning, Nakoto. I've been kaimahi with Mangatawa for a few years now, and I've been fortunate to walk alongside Mangatawa's trustees and the shareholders in the uh, development of its papakainga from inception um, to its fruition. So let's take a look at the development of Mangatawa's um, tenancy portfolio with Mangatawa's vision, which underpins the um, co-papa co of the papakainga. Um, Mangatawa Mangatawa's vision is that the shareholders of Mangatawa and their whānau enjoy maximum benefits from their shareholding and to enhance the social outcomes of our shareholders and their whānau by participating and promoting employment, health, education and housing. So from the, that po, Mangatawa took a look at their mission for it, specifically for the papakainga, and that is to support our shareholders and their beneficiaries and enjoying the maximum benefits from their shareholding by providing a quality of life by way of affordable housing in a peaceful and tranquil setting. Let's take a look at how that criteria is set to achieve that, is set to achieve that mission. So we laid out some criteria in terms of the four one-bedroom Komatua units that we have. Uh, we look at um, shareholders and beneficiaries who are 55 years plus, uh, one to two occupants, one-bedroom homes, and they're independent in living. Uh, and we look for a fair distribution between whānau groups within the shareholders, uh, just so that we've got a, a, an equilibrium throughout the um, shareholder database for our whānau that live in the papakainga. And we have fixed we weekly rentals on those, those units. Moving along to the, um, to the two bedroom, 10 two bedroom Komatua units, which is fixed said, um, is administered by Housing New Zealand. Um, and then we have two bedroom Komatua units, which we built a couple of years later and is administered by Mangatawa ourselves. Uh, we look at shareholders or beneficiaries who are 65 years um, plus, one to two occupants with independent living, or one occupant who has a live in caregiver. Uh, again, fair distribution between whānau groups and weekly rental is assessed by earnings. As you can see, we have quite a, we have a broad range of housing, so we have a broad range of criteria that we need to cover. It keeps us busy in the office. In terms of our 12 four-bedroom whānau homes, we're looking at large whānau groups that are in need. Um, again, shareholders and beneficiaries of Mangatawa, and as Kevin had pointed out earlier, that's about, uh, we have a shareholding of, of about 700. Um, earnings assessed um, weekly rental. Now keeping that in mind, um, we all know that market rent is steadily increasing. Our trustees have steered Mangatawa into a position where we are able to provide all of our rentals to our shareholders at well below market rate. Um, and then we've also, in the stages of developing the Kainga Whenua Homes, and that has its own home ownership criteria. Okay, so keeping in mind the various criteria for tenancies, let's take a look at the process, process from um, expectation to reality, how it works. So in terms of our Komatua rentals, well before the houses were built, we um, communicated with our shareholders and asked them to put in expressions of interest uh, we have pānui that we send out to our shareholders uh, quarterly. We also have uh, an annual shareholders update information hui uh, where they come along and we just update them with what's happening um, within Mangatawa. And then, of course, we have the AGM and we also have the annual Christmas kaumātua um, due at the end of the year. Uh, so we have quite a substantial database uh, where 
we have shareholders who have expressed an interest in housing. Uh, we've talked about the, the criteria, the allocation process, which was agreed to by Mangatawa, um, and then we recommended our tenants to Housing New Zealand, and all of our tenants were processed as a group. Our shareholders are tenants of Housing New Zealand at a subsidised rent, and what we found is that our kaumatua, they like interacting with us in the office, and they didn't want to phone the 0800 number, to get in contact with Housing New Zealand if they had um, a maintenance or repair issue. So one thing we did set up was we got them to um, complete the authority to act so that we could get in contact with Housing New Zealand and act on their behalf if there were issues in regards to, uh, to repairs or maintenance. We also set up a Komatua Residence Committee um, and our Komatua meet with um, our operations manager once a month, and and they um, have caught it all about what's happening, what's going on in um, Mangatawa, uh, and what activities they're looking towards having, and any other ideas towards development of the pub kāinga. Then our Fano rentals, how they worked. Again, we had an expression of interest database that we put out. Uh, and Mangatawa also received um, community um, housing provider status. And um, our tenants, so through that process, we um, referred the, our tenants to, um, to the Ministry of Social Development for social housing assessment. We went through the allocation process internally and then they were recommended to um, Ministry of Social Development and they were all processed as, as a group. Um, so Ministry of Social Development tenants, they receive subsidised rental but we also have um, employed tenants uh, that don't receive a subsidised rental. Uh, our tenants were signed up in pre-Christmas last year and they moved in in January this year. Uh, we've since set up a Papakainga Residence Committee and again they, work, they get together on a monthly basis to discuss um, any issues that they have um, and uh, as a good get together as well. So administratively, um, what guides us on a daily basis um, is, of course, our landlord's responsibilities. Now we have... We have quite a, a large book uh, of policies and procedures which we're guided by. Um, and then on top of that, of course, you've got the, uh, the Tenancy Act, um, and specifically we keep in mind Section um, 45 of that Act. Uh, and our tenants, again, they have their own responsibilities. Uh, we handed out to them um, a, a residence booklet which we um, put together that gives them information about the bus route, the bus timetable, uh, rubbish, rubbish collection, uh, whether they're, they're allowed dogs on site, uh, evacuation processes, and we update that on a regular basis as well. And we've found that over the course of time, uh, we are continuously, this, this document is continuously evolving. And of course, um, our tenants have, um, you know, they have some duties in regards to the, the, residence, um, the Residential Tenancy Act as well. So Mangatawa's landscape has changed considerably and it continues to evolve. What's good about um, the development of our papakainga, 17% of our tenants are employed. Uh, the residents have rejuvenated the marae and helped to keep our home fires burning. Uh, the Punareo preschool development is getting up and running by our whānau uh, tenants and they run, um, the whānau run ac active school holiday programs for the tamariki. We have a happy, healthy whānau vibe living in improved living conditions, and we're keeping our culture alive by building a strong, sustainable community in Whanaungatanga. Now, on that note, tomorrow, um, <laughs> on that note, tomorrow, our whanau um, have organised a gala day. Um, this is going to be held at the whanau Papakainga. It starts at 10 a.m. and it's um, going to help to raise funds for the Tamariki um, school holiday programmes. Uh, so, yes, the gala day starts at 10 o'clock and there's going to be a lot of um, awesome kai, um, bouncy castles for the, for the tamariki. So, 
after the hui, um, make your way over there, or if you've got any whānau that um, are looking for a good day out, make your way to the Papapāinga. Kia ora. Thank you.